This is not shake and win. They just win 10 million. This is more than just a little scam. You know, so on a rich channel, no, me can't. So, so on a rich real. No, 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 lily, lily boy, pan the media. You know, no, no, money. You know, no, 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 riches. No, 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 body boy, man. Yeah, you know, no, no, money, bro. All of you are following me up. Show me some money. I can see if I have money. Two bends them with the blue plate, and them are the problem. Believe it, two bends them with the blue plate, and them are the on a girl. Welcome to Crime Time News and Entertainment with a Buzz. There's a saying that goes something like this. The higher that the monkey climbs, is the more that he's exposed. A next one, he that exalted himself shall be a base. A couple of months ago, I spoke about a social media personality known as Pops YG. I said that based on the stuff that he's doing on social media, showing off Benz, showing off wads of cash. As a matter of fact, there was even one instant in which there was some contest of the Chapri on TikTok specifically, where he showed off what he said allegedly. Four point something million dollars worth of cash. Now this young youth, maybe about 17, 19, different age, not very consistent with his exact age. Young youth nevertheless. Him have a Benz, him crash it, him fix it back, him buy a next Benz again. So therefore, the video that you saw is of those two Benz in which he is always pulling off in. Now, people, if you work hard for your money and you're famous, rich and famous, you can buy whatever the F-U-C-K you want to. You are young, dumb, want to have fun. So, therefore, nothing is wrong with that. It is not the perfect way to go. However, we understand we'll give him a pass for being young. The last video that I did, I said, there's a group of popo that are assigned to scout, monitor social media to find all of these buffoons that are out there chopping the line, doing all sorts of illicit activity and then they come on social media and show off to their fan base and also the ops. I said that Pops YG is under surveillance. I said that the feds overseas are investigating him. I said that it is either he is going to get locked up or he is going to D.I.E. at the hands of the opposition, bad mind them call it. Did not know which one was going to come first or if he was going to be the victim of both. Well, people, here we see it. It has manifested. He was locked up in Trelawney by the Trelawney Popo at some sort of Airbnb that he was renting with his girlfriend from overseas, he had ties to Chapery in his phone, meaning lead sheets and stuff like that. Now, when I did my video, a couple of them, people did not even know who this young man is. People did I say, listen, make the young youth them, make them money. I have no problem with them making their money. The problem that I have and what I do as a blogger, I expose the buffoonery, the criminal activity that I see on social media and I ask, how comes? I give advice to the individuals that are probably redeemable because at the end of the day, I don't know this youth to be involved in any sort of pie pie out. However, we know that when it comes to the chapery, it goes hand in hand. When you start make money, you are going to seal up your security, meaning by all sorts of tool. Never seen this youth not any sorts of tool, with any sorts of tool, sorry. Never hear that he is involved in any sorts of thing. But I warned him before, the ops are going to get him or the cops are going to get him. And such is the case. In this case, there's a thing that is called a wise man learns from his mistake. A wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. This youth obviously is not going to learn from his own mistake because he is full of hype. And one thing that I know about hype, hype causes you to lose your life and lose your stripe. So therefore, now he is locked up, like I told you, 
don't know if this is a start of some sort of domino trickle down effect wherein the feds are going to step in if it happens i won't be surprised if he gets a next chance he is going to go back out there and do the same thing because persons are out there encouraging the buffoonery let's see what is going to happen point blank and period so the next thing that is popping in the news it is called what are the odds that the odds are stacked against them but what are the odds that they are going to do anything different insanity it is called i am speaking about a group of young men in a jamaica that are giving away their life on a rapid basis on these bikes specifically these yang yang the latest accident two brothers in a spot valley that is in st james i think based on information it is said that at about 1 am in the morning both brothers were on two bikes both of those bikes did not have any sorts of headlights both of those brothers were not wearing any sorts of helmets however both of those brothers crashed into each other going in opposite direction Both brothers are 29 year old. Now when you hear this you say to yourself, well if them are 29 year old, they must be twins or the mother of them months apart. Maybe the father of two sons from two different mother. So therefore that would explain that situation. But what explains two brothers going in opposite direction at the same time in the morning? on the same main road now i understand that they live in the same close proximity or probably in the same house but what are the odds so when we see stuff like this we have to ask the question what are the odds were these persons doing some sorts of stunt riding or is it just coincidental or even more than coincidental an unfortunate accident coincidentally or is this a sign to these you that listen if you don't wear your helmet if you don't have on any sorts of headlights you might clash crash head on into each other even as brothers it is a very sad state of affair however this is jamaica the abnormal is now the normal point blank and period So the next thing that is popping in the news it seems as if Mr Dylan Reed OC Bolby or CJ from Black Shop that is Hamity Hall that is in St James he got the memo he read the notice board he saw the message in the bottle and this is based on an incident that took place in a Granville that is in St James where an officer constable Linroy Codner was on duty doing his traffic assignments it seems as if he pulled over an individual that was driving a pro box that is owned by a young man known as Matthew Andra Armstrong however Mr Armstrong was not driving the vehicle at the time it was being driven by Mr Reed Dylan Reed that is it seems as if when the poor poor pulled over Mr Reed him either have too much ticket or him either did hot so him decide say listen eh me na take no sorts of stop today the poor poor knowing their style probably jump in front of the vehicle as if he is some sorts of iron man however he would learn the hard way and this is not to glorify or justify because the officer was hit down licking at some sorts of ditch or precipice he is badly injured he is presently in a some sorts of critical condition so therefore family members please hope and pray for him now people this happened on friday at about saturday afternoon or so mr bolby cj decided that based on the instructions of his lawyer his granny or his pastor that listen the poor poor them circle the house a couple of times and they did not look very happy They let me know that listen please to turn in yourself ASAP or else we are going to turn you into some sorts of dopey send it to the land of the ones was living he decided that he was going to listen so therefore after consultation with smuddy he decided to turn himself over to the popo station 
people that man did the right thing. A lot of times in a Jamaica, these youths, them do something crazy and then they make it escalate to something crazier. Mr. Reed decided that, listen, me know how them poor poor stay unjustifiably so. Once them get hurt, what if them get K-I-L-L-E-D, they are going to take it personally. They are going to want to personally take me out and send me to a next place, the afterlife. So therefore, I am going to do the right thing after the wrong thing before something wrong do me. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, it seems as if Portland is living up to its name. Portland, which part the Boatland. Now that used to apply to all sorts of DRUGS boats that used to come to Jamaica or leave from Jamaica, going to other places, call it GUNS for DRUGS. DRUGS for bikes, Rete, Lele, Blue, Blah, Bling. However, it seems as if the Haitians, they have found some sorts of loophole. They have come to the realization that, you know, say, the little place named Portland, it is kind of porous. It is like some sort of sieve where the whole of the mesh tear out, rip out. Everything can go through. And based on that intelligence, they've been coming in by the drones. We've heard of at least four, five, six or so instances in which the Eish and them land in a Portland, in other boats. Now what makes this even more jaw-dropping, more startling, is the fact that the Haitians are not known for their navigational skills, such as Jack Crusoe. They are not the best conquistadors, such as Christopher Columbus. However, they seem to be coming in by the drones. So we have to ask ourselves the question, if these simple people that are just running from desperation can just reach Jamaica so, one, two, three, easy just like that. What says the man with millions or billions, as in the cartel, as in anybody that wants to drop anything off in a Jamaica, specifically Portland? What are the odds that they are going to be successful? people the answer to that is a hundred billion percent so therefore this should be some sort of warning to the relevant authority as in the border patrol because we see say, the people i mean a portland kind of concern that anybody can just come in whenever them feel like it is like an open door policy it is like back road central so hopefully the relevant authority, as in Popo, Border Patrol specifically, will take heed. You sleep, I'm a D-E-A-T-H. Don't turn a blind eye unless, of course, you are the beneficiaries to the proceeds of crime or smugglery. Whatever the word is, point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that everybody and them granny I make all sorts of posts. As it pertains to Usain Bolt's being postponed in the payment of the thiefery of his 12.7 million US dollars from the SSL. We saw that the news articles, they made posts and said that some of the victims, 200 or so, have gotten back some sorts of money, refund, pennies on the dollar, that is. We saw that the PNP made some sorts of posts and they indicated that a hundred and forty something thousand dollars was lodged into one of the 28 accounts of Andrew Holness coming from SSL a day after the account was open. We saw that Bolt made some sorts of posts and he said that. Them take the country boys love for country for granted. But do they love their country or love themselves, their pockets? We know that he was talking about SSL, specifically Andrew Holness and the JLP. Now we see that the upper heads of the JLP, they might make some sorts of posts and they are saying that SSL should return Bolt's money is $12.7 million or somewhere around there. 
All the while we see that the Prime Minister has not responded. The Prime Minister has been in a India being some sorts of Gardner. He is scheduled for China, Russia, all over the world. It seems as if him take for himself until it kind of cools down. So the question that I want to ask the JLP, the upper hierarchy, Nigel Clark, Andrew Holness, since you are soon to be cellmates or conspirators of the crimery, mean the choppery, why don't you guys have some sorts of boardroom and come to a conclusion or a decision that, listen, it is in the best interest of the JLP and the country that Usain Bolt and the other 200 victims get their money back because it is not looking so good. So instead of making all sorts of BS posts and making all sorts of promises, on top of promises that will never and have never been fulfilled because this is politics. Why don't you pay this man and stop postponing all this pussery? Point blank and period. There's a saying in the gangster world that goes something like this. It is better to be caught with it and not need it than to be caught without it and need it, meaning the tool. It is better to be tried by a jury of 12 with that tool than to be carried out to the afterlife by six, meaning the pall bearers are the people who carry the casket to the afterlife. Well, people, it seems as if some gunmen in a place called Big Lane, to be specific, that is in Central Village, they were at some sorts of party, shooting the breeze, sipping on some scissor, some sorts of Jerry and Navy kind of de-stressing gangster style. When they got some sorts of information to the poor poor them, they on the block. It seems as if they decided they were going to release themselves of their toll and everybody fling with them toll in at the exterior of the building. Don't know if it's because through some sorts of window or whatever the case was. Don't know the specifics. However, when the poor poor went, they found these tools that you see on the screen as I speak. And based on a report from the Popo, no one was arrested. None of the gunmen that were in the building. None of the persons that own or operated this business establishment. So I am assuming that whenever the persons saw the jeep them pull up, before the boy them couldn't jump out, these gunmen ran to the exterior or the back of the building and fling them tool through some sorts of window, through some sorts of grill. It seems as if when they assess and analyze the situation, they thought to themselves, it is better to be G-U-N wise than prison foolish. Meaning that based on the present amendment in the Firearm Act and Arrest Acts, if we get hold with this tool on our person, meaning tucked in safely in our waist, our time is going to be wasted with this fresh 15, meaning minimum mandatory 15 years, especially caught red-handed with your hand in the cookie jar or the tool in our waist. So then do them risk analysis and them fling with the tool. The poor poor no say, listen, we find four tool outside, luckily. Unfortunately, they could not have arrested anybody. So them take four tool off of the road, Four tool with X amount of ammunition, meaning multiple lives could be saved or will be saved, definitely will be saved. These gunmen live to be hanging or posing off with tool as some gun bags for the next day. But people like them say, usually you don't have to chase down people, purses or prisoners of habit. They will do the same thing and like the saying goes, Every day that the bucket goes to the well, one day the bottom are going to drop out. Meaning, literally, they are going to go to prison or even the big yard. Modern, that is, point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, 
please to subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.